Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're a first time viewer, my name is Jeff Lanoski. Today is an awesome day because I'm gonna give you a look at my brand new bike, the Reeb Steezel. This bike has been getting a ton of interest on the internet. So I'm gonna give you a look at my personal bike, show you how I set it up, give you some insight into what makes this bike so special and answer some of the questions you may have about it. Let's jump into it. So this is the Reeb Steezel. This is a 155 millimeter travel frame. The front end is made of steel. The rear is made out of aluminum. You can run it dual 29er like I have it set up here or using the flip chip, you can run it as a mullet as well and put a 27.5 rear wheel on the back. The head tube angle on this bike is 64 degrees with a 160 millimeter travel fork. That allows us to have a really confidence inspiring front end for when you're going super fast on single track it just keeps the bike nice and stable. The seat tube angle is 77 degrees. That puts you in a really good position when you're climbing, which is super important on these longer travel bikes. It is available in five sizes. That's something relatively new for us. We added an extra size to close the gap to give riders a better opportunity to size up or size down. In this video, I'll talk about what size I ride and why. The rear chain stays are also available in two different lengths. 434 millimeters, which comes standard on the small, medium, and large, and 444, which comes standard on the large and extra large. When you order the bike, you're also able to choose the chainstay length that you prefer. So if you happen to want a more nimble bike on an extra large, we can provide you with that. And if you happen to want super long, stable chainstays on a small, medium, large, we can do that as well. Another cool feature of this bike is the maximum seat post insertion. On a small, you can fit 180 millimeter dropper post. On a medium, 210. And on anything from a large through the double XL, you can fit a whopping 240 millimeter seat post, which is what I ride. This is a custom color called eggplant. And if you order a Steezel or any Reeb, we offer custom color options. That's a quick overview of the frame. Let me talk to you really quick about my components and how I set it up, and then we'll answer some of the common questions that I've seen on social media about this bike. I'm running Shimano XTR brakes and drivetrain on this bike. The gearing is a 32 tooth chainring in the front combined with an 1151 cassette in the rear. Another longtime sponsor of mine is Industry 9. Enduro 305s on this bike, those have Vittoria Mazda tires. I use a 2.6 in the front, and a 2.4 in the rear. An important thing that you can't see on this bike is the orange seal sealant in my tires. That keeps me running flat free. They have been a longtime supporter of this channel. For the cockpit, I am using Shimano Pro Tharsis handlebars. These are a 30 millimeter rise carbon handlebar. And for the stem, I'm using a 40 millimeter Industry 9. The newest and most exciting change on this bike is the Cane Creek suspension. Cane Creek is an awesome partner for Reeb. We've always had lots of bikes around the shop with Cane Creek suspension on it. And every time I would get on one of those bikes, I was super impressed on how well it worked. Up front, I'm running the Helm MK2 Air version. It's set at 160 millimeters. I really love the adjustability of this fork. It has high and low speed compression as well as rebound. And there's a really cool feature that allows you to adjust your air chamber so you can make your fork more or less progressive depending on your riding style. The rear shock was a huge selling point for me with Cane Creek and one of the main reasons I wanted to join this brand. There's so much adjustability on this. What I really like about it is the adjustability of the high and low speed rebound. You take some time and set it up properly. The performance of this shock is second to none. All right, so there's a look at the components that I'm running. Now let's talk a little bit more about the frame. A lot of people wonder why the bike uses a steel front triangle. If you've been a fan of Reeb for a long time, you may know that we started out as a steel hardtail brand. So going back to the steel front triangles gets us a little bit closer to our heritage, but there's also a lot of practical reasons why we chose to use this material as well. Up until recently and the addition of additive manufacturing, a steel suspension bike might not have been possible because it'd be pretty heavy. By using additive manufacturing, we can make the main pivot on this bike out of 3D printed material. We can make it hollow and that allows us to keep the weight down and it's actually pretty competitive to a lot of the carbon bikes that you see on the market. We can have the tubes and the gussets laser cut. 
That allows us to make our bikes a little bit quicker and get them to you, the consumer, a little bit faster. But most importantly, we get super accurate cuts on the tubes and the gussets so that when we get them back and we put them in the jigs, everything is lined up perfect and fits in there super accurately, allowing us to give you the best product and ride possible. Last fall, we introduced a bike called the Reeb SST. That's an acronym for steel short travel bike. That one had a steel front triangle and a rear triangle. So we get a lot of questions about why does this bike use an aluminum rear triangle versus steel like the SST. The reason that we were able to use steel on the SST and not on the Steezel is because the amount of travel is quite a bit more. So on the SST, we use a flex day design. There's no rear pivot. We just flatten the chain stay and that allows us to accomplish enough movement in that rear triangle to accomplish that travel. By sticking with aluminum for the rear end, when you go up to 155 millimeters of travel, you need more movement in your rear end. We're able to have a really stiff rear triangle. We have a nice supple feel due to the pivot points in the rear chain stays. And it's a proven design that we've had in use for several years on the Squeeb. Another cool feature about this frame is the CRT rocker. That stands for Cool Ranch Technology. And that's basically referring to the interface of the rockers on the spindle that connect them. We use a triangle interface. It allows us to lock those rockers into place and have a nice stiff rear end. By using the solution, it's allowed us to have the most standover possible. Even on an extra large frame, the top tube is so low, but on a small and a medium where that standover is even more critical, we're able to get that top tube really low. All right, so let's take a look at some of the questions that we got from you on social media about this bike. Main difference versus the SST, and do I notice how the alloy rear end feels? So one of the things I liked about the SST when I got on it was it had 120 millimeters of travel. It felt significantly more than that when you rode it, and it felt really stiff. So it kind of felt almost like a soft tail. It didn't have any flex in the rear end. It just moved up and down the way you would want it to move. When I got on a Steezel, it had a very similar feeling, but when you have 155 millimeters of travel versus a 120, it's a lot more travel. So you need to do more to keep that rear end stiff. I think by using the aluminum rear end, we were able to accomplish that because I would say, aside from having significantly more travel on the Steezel, they feel pretty similar as far as rear end side to side stiffness. The next question was curious about your build weight and how it climbs. That's an awesome question because even though you want a bike to descend awesome, you still got to get it to the top of the hill. We're pretty far up here and this thing climbs pretty good. I took this bike for a really long climb yesterday and it felt surprisingly good on the climbs. I think a lot of that has to do with kinematics of the rear suspension. There's very, very little pedal kickback. You can keep your suspension open and active as you're climbing, which will give you awesome grip. This bike is an extra large and it weighs under 35 pounds. So for me, riding a bike and not trying to choose any parts that really skimp on weight, that's a super reasonable weight for me. So believe it or not, by switching to a steel front triangle, my bike is actually lighter than my old full aluminum bikes used to be. The next question was, please show the clearance between the rear tire and the rear triangle. Does a 2.5 fit? We actually call out this frame as fitting a 2.6. We're huge fans of Vittoria tires. Their larger width tire is a 2.6. So if you take a peek at my 2.4, there's tons of clearance in there. Definitely room to go up two tenths of an inch more. Next question is, what size frame do I ride and why? That's an awesome question. We offer five frame sizes now, small, medium, large, extra large, and double extra large. I'm six feet four, so I would be at the higher end of that spectrum, but I choose to ride an extra large. The reason being, I live on the East Coast where the trails are really technical. We're constantly squeezing in between trees and I want my bike to be nice and nimble. So I size down to a 500 millimeter reach on the extra large and it allows me to ride the bike how I wanna ride it. All right, there you go. That's my brand new Reebs diesel. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll be sure to answer as many of them as possible. If you're going to any big mountain bike festivals this summer, take a look to see if I'll be there or Reeb. You can get to see one of these bikes in person or maybe even demo them. I'll leave a link in the description below to the Reeb website where you could check out some more information about these bikes. And if you're in Colorado or at one of those festivals and we're there, you can throw a leg over one and demo yourself.
I can't wait to make some videos for you riding this bike. I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. Until next time, get out there and be a boss.